Fay, God Morgan. Dallas told me about you. You must be as hard as diamonds and twice as bright to have come so far. Your Divine welcomes you. The Divine you thought dead lords over the chamber from a granite throne. He moves to speak, but it's Reedman's voice that next pierces the air. What a twist. Lucian frowns at Vredeman, then bestows a benevolent smile upon you. All that you know of him flashes across the panorama of your mind. I underestimated you, Godwoken. You have proven to be a formidable foe. You have my respect. Respect? Indeed. Lucian's gaze rests upon you and goes through you. He takes your measure entirely. Lucian, we should tell him the truth. Yes, I agree. It is time we dropped our masks. Dallas nods, then reaches for the sides of her head. Where there was one face, suddenly there are four. She takes off the mask of the shapeshifter. A skull is revealed, bejeweled and ancient as the void. I am eternal. Aren't they just full of surprises? Fear not, good Logan. Dallas is on the side of all that is good. She is helping me rid Rivalon of the influence of the Source. Listen to her. I shall tell you the tale as I told it to Lucian. Long ago, the Scholar Fane discovered that the veil between the world and the Void was made of Source. Our Seven Lords desired this power. Of course. Silence, slave. Our king forbade the Seven to reach for this power, but they didn't listen. Instead, they rebelled and sent the king and his people into the Void. With the source they stole from the Veil, the Seven created the races so they would have worshippers. During their lives, worshippers collect source. When they die, the gods feed from them. It's an ingenious system. Our souls are nothing but vats for the source-hungry gods. The Seven made a mistake. By taking its source, they tore a hole in the veil, and it is through this hole that the Void finds its way into our world. The Seven's lust for power let in the Void. Our goal is to close the hole they created, to restore the source to the veil. When we are done, there shall be no more source in the world. Rivalon will be finally free from the gods that enslave them. He hesitates, then he swallows his pride. Here is the truth. I have killed thousands, perhaps millions, for the greater good. But I made a mistake. It was my use of death fog that opened the door to the god king. It upset the Veil, and took the Seven by surprise. My one mistake meant all those sacrifices were for naught. Those sacrifices must have meaning. They must stop the Void once and for all. My people cannot be allowed to return from the Void. They are tarnished. They are Void-woken. They can only bring chaos and death and... There is more, but she hesitates to share it. Then she decides that she must. I was a child when the God King tore my family apart. I was purged of sores and left to rot in a putrid tomb. A child! It was hell. A hell I suffered for the sins of my father. He was the one that betrayed the God King. He was the one that told the Seven the secrets of the Veil. 
The cruel joke of it all is that the same tomb that housed my tortured body is what sheltered me from the void. Few Eternals escaped that fate. Myself, my mother, and Thane. Yes, Thane. You are my father. Dallas gives you a steady look, cool and collected. This is your daughter. You are her father. Your child rotted away in a tomb. Just like you, father. Look at us! We are all that remains! But now I have revenge. Revenge on the Seven and the God King. Revenge for what they took from me. My life. My people. My mother. The hammer's voice falters and her coolness vanishes. Every crack and rasp betrays her grief. But her next words burn not with sadness, but anger. Did you even look for me? Did you even look for her? Dallas, control yourself. Our purpose transcends your personal wounds. Yes. You... You are right. Dallas's reasons weren't mine to question. All that ever mattered to me was peace. Peace for Rivalon. Peace for me, whatever the means. And now, we are on the precipice. She sacrificed herself for the betterment of Rivalon. She didn't do it willingly, mind you. Curiosity led her to the tomb. My hunger for source took care of the rest. I presume her bones remain there. And then I took her place. Face rippers are such marvels, aren't they? It didn't take long to realize that Lucian was the key to my vengeance, and I was the key to the salvation of Rivalon. While Pallas sought the Aetiran, I started draining the gods of their source. Slurp, slurp, slurp. One more word from you and I shall use the leash. I had to hide from the gods. So I had the walls of this crypt equipped with tenebrium and protections put in place. It worked. Everyone, even the gods, thought me dead. As divine, I was created, empowered to stop the Void. I was the Avatar of the Seven, their strength and their weakness. My bond to them allowed me to drain them of their source. Yes, in a sense. When the Death Fog was unleashed, many elves died. With fewer elves to worship him, Tyr Dilius weakened. This gave the God King his first real foothold back in the world. To strengthen himself, he sent his Void Woken, the remnants of my people, to hunt down the sorcerers seeking to reclaim their source. The Void Woken. Disgusting things. They ravaged the land they touched, and infected the air they breathed. They were also an incredible stroke of luck. You see, blaming the sorcerers for Voidwoken made them easier to capture. The Aterra now contains almost all of the source the Seven stole. Soon, we will be able to heal the Vale. The Void shall be banished. And I, Lucian the Divine, shall return from the dead. A false divine, of course. I shall have no power. But the world will not know this. I shall demand peace, and we shall have it. The plan is almost complete. We have made so many sacrifices, Godwoken. All of us. Of ourselves and those we love. One last sacrifice is required. For the future of Rivalon, you must surrender your source. 
Decide. Be the true hero and give up your source, or be forced to submit. Like a coward. Like a slave. There is no other way. The source of the world is required to close the veil. All of the source. We only lack yours. Good. You understand. The world shall not know this. I shall return from the grave, a divine without power, yet all who desire power shall fear me. I shall carry the secret of my lack of divinity. Peace shall reign. Alexander was godwoken. Once, years ago, I should have killed Damien, but instead took him as my son. Quite the mistake. Now, I was forced to kill Alexander, my blood. But once more, I could not. The task fell to me. And me. We already had more than enough Godwoken. Another sacrifice I was forced to make. Those beautiful people. I was as kind as I could be. I promise you that. As I say, one last sacrifice is required. Yours. Then let us proceed. Show some responsibility, Father! Surrender your source! You'll be a hero. Everyone will know of the sacrifice you'll make. Your name will be synonymous with the survival of Rivalon. Don't let them do this to us! But our souls, they're- No! Never! I understand. Sacrifice takes courage. But I shall help you. Though it pains me. Your sacrifice shall be made for you. Dallas. I'm sorry. You've come such a long way. But there is too much at stake. This is the end.
Are you feeling poorly, Dallas? Good. You shall not seal the veil. And now it is time. I call on the God King. Come claim what is yours. How? What? You are unleashed! Friedemann cackles in delight at this turn of events. His unbridled glee slithers into your veins and throttles your heart. You left the leashing wand next to me, you stupid maggot. So accustomed had you become to me pretending to be your slave. Kill him! Do shut up, you tedious buffoon. And don't look so surprised. As if I would allow that bone bag Dallas to enslave me. Me? This is not the time for talk. Kill him, now! Too late, you moldering blight-stained pigs. Grant me power, my ally. God King, I call on you. You would interrupt Bracchus Rex. You would interrupt the Source King. You shall redefine suffering. King hears my call. He sends a companion worthy of my power. Come to your father. Come to the Source King.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Lucian struggles to rise, but the weight of his own pain leaves him to gravity's mercy. My time is done. But you, your source burns so bright I'm all but blinded by it. Be wise and true, Godwoken. I am no hero, but wisdom and truth. These are values I always believed in. Dallas groans in pain. I have failed. The future of all that is rests on your shoulders. This is it. I can hardly believe it. She casts her gaze around the crypt in awe. After everything we've been through, after everything we've seen, here we are. Here I am. And now that I see Godhood before me, I know what I have to do. Chief, you need to ascend. There's no one I would trust with this responsibility but you. I know you'll do what needs to be done, what ought to be done. And I know you'll do it with style. Hell, I could have told you that. You'll do great, by me and by my whole realm. Now go on, shoo. You've got business to attend to. Listen, this is it, again. And I want you to know I'm not putting up a fight, not against you. My revels are now ended. Yours are about to begin. I've had my vengeance, my life and my liberty. You helped me win them back. And then, when we made love, all of me awoke. All I want now is for this to end. To be by your side when we wage the final battle. And long, long after. I know you won't. Now kiss me. You kiss each other passionately, ready to face the darkest dark. Here we stand, once more on the cusp of divinity. But this cup, so long thirsted for, I willfully let it pass from me. All my life has been a lead up to this, to be the king of kings, god of gods. I will not say it was in vain, but I will say it was vanity. If I were to chance upon my throne right now, I would sit down beside it, cast my glance to the horizon, and think of worthier things. I'd think of Sadha, my great love. I'd think of my children, their joyous dance through fiery skies. And of course I'd think of you, of the adventures we had, of our unlikely yet heartfelt friendship. Yes, I'd sit there, thoroughly contented, and wait for you to ascend the throne. I know. A mischievous smile. But I do have to add, likewise. You think back on your journey here, on all that you have seen and done. You think of the Magisters, and the sorcerers they hunted, and of the good and the evil on both sides. You think of how the Eternals came as Voidwoken to reclaim their stolen world. You look at the source around you. The power is immense. Divinity at your fingertips. You think of what you could do with such power. The rights you'd wrong, the wars you'd win. You marvel at your journey and how it has changed you. You think of those you left behind, and of those you met along the way, who stood by you or against you. It's time to choose your fate, and the fate of all you hold dear. What shall it be? Shall you be divine? After all that you have been through, and all that you have done, all that you have become, the Aetiran lies in front of you. Divinity is yours to take, or to sacrifice. What you do next decides your own fate, and the future of the world. 
What shall you do with divinity? And so it ended, a tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the Godwoken. A new divine rose, a true heir to the Seven, more powerful than ever, and united Rivalon in its battle against the Void. All across the realm he was loved, worshipped and adored. Humans, lizards, elves and dwarves all rallied to his banner. The Great Allegiance stood once more, but the war continued. From the depths of the Void, the God King still sought to return. As for me, I was freed of the God King's terrible tyranny. I avoided an eternity of pain and suffering. Now I fight for the other side. Now, I fight for the Divine.